The reason why I think the Eagles have a very strong chance to win tomorrow against the Bucks is because they simply have evolved. While the Bucks, they've they've trended downwards, guys. They're now 12th against the run on average yards per carry. Remember, the best run defense, you don't run on the Bucks, you've got to throw. No, the Eagles, they're the best running team in football right now. And they have been since what, week seven? This is a team they're gonna to continue to run the ball. The Bucks, sure, they might have an answer for that. But now with Nick Sirianni calling a different game, because he expected Jalen Hurts to be a different quarterback in the beginning of the season, to where now he's like, okay, Hurts, here's who he is. Let me coach him like the player that he is. And what is the player that Jalen Hurts is? He's a mobile quarterback. He can throw the ball down the field. But the first priority is to get the run game going and then to lead that into play action and then have Hurts take a couple of shots. I mean, if Hurts is sitting up in the pocket throwing over and over again against the Bucs, this game is going to be over in the first quarter. So the Eagles, they've got to establish a run game. You want to play to your strengths, not your opponent's weaknesses. And the Bucks' weakness is through the air. The Eagles' strength is through the ground. Run the damn ball. If that doesn't work, then you could start to throw. But from a Colts fan, again, and I bring this up because when we played the Bucs, we, we didn't run the ball. Jonathan Taylor, I think, had 97 yards or something like that, which seems doesn't seem like much. But it might have been scrimmage. But basically, they shut down Taylor. But it became to the point where it's like first down, we're throwing every single time. And we had a lead in that game, but we kept throwing it. Sometimes you need to just play through your strength. And it, I know that the Bucks they're going to stack the box, but I don't I don't know if they're going to do that against the Eagles, to be honest with you. They did that against the Colts. So if obviously if they're stacking the box, you can't just run. But I'm really hoping that the Eagles can get a run game going because that's the only chance they're going to win. Because if they if they get a run game going and then you already have a Bucks defense that is susceptible against the pass... The Eagles offense is going to be able to move this ball down the field because they, they did put up 22 points last week, and they're going to have to put up more if they want to win this game. You're not beating Tom Brady on on the road by scoring 22 points in a playoff game. It's They're going to have to put up probably 30 points in this game, and if they put up 30 points, they have a really high chance. Also, the, the Eagles defense has not been good against the best offenses in the league, which is a story for a different time, but let's get back into what I was saying here. So, of course, Hurts, last time he played the Bucks, it was one of his, really his worst early game performances up to the point at this point of his career especially in the past but then since Nick Sirianni he's taken a different offensive approach he's starting to call games for a different quarterback in that loss to the Bucks Miles Sanders had one carry in the first half and since then of course Jordan Howard is starting to become the bruising number two behind Sanders it's been a really good combination you can't just ignore guys like Kenneth Gainwell of course and Boston Scott it's a confusing backfield don't get me wrong but I feel like we know what the Eagles are going to do. And that's, they're going to ride through Miles Sanders, and then they're, they're still going to give Jordan Howard probably 10-plus carries. Boston Scott might mix in a little bit. It's tough to stop all of these different types of backs. I mean, you're changing the pace completely. Jordan Howard's a physical back. Miles Sanders is more of an elusive type of guy. And then you have Boston Scott and Kenny Gamewell that can catch the ball out of the backfield, but they could still run the ball too. I like Kenneth Gamble a lot. I hope he can get more minutes, uh, especially coming out of college, dude. I'm I, I'm surprised he wasn't picked earlier. The Eagles got a steal there, but Tampa Bay, it, it definitely screams it's a top three run defense, but they've allowed over 100 yards to the Falcons, Jets, and Bills in the last month. The Eagles, meanwhile, lead the NFL with an average of almost 160 rushing yards per game, and Hurts, who battled an ankle injury down the stretch, should be in prime form after an extra week of rest. Remember, he, did, he didn't play against the Cowboys, so he has an extra week of rest. He's also, just to begin with, he's unfazed by the big stage. I was looking at all of the court, rookie, uh, not, excuse me, not rookie, but I was looking at the young quarterbacks making their playoff debuts. You have guys like Kyler and Burrow and Hurts. And which of them is poised to have the best debut? I voted for Joe Burrow. I'm not going to lie to you, Eagles fans. But my second vote, even over Kyler Murray, it would be Jalen Hurts. With that rest, with the Bucks coming into the playoffs, not the same team that they were a year ago. They're completely beatable. They've given up over 100 rushing yards to three teams, and two of them are trash in the past month. Why not Eagles, bro? Why not? I'd say why not us, but I'm not an Eagles fan. But, like, you know, why not the Eagles? Now is the best opportunity for them to defeat Tom Brady. Like, they could send Tom Brady into an early retirement. Okay, of course, if Brady loses this game, he's not going to retire. But the Eagles, they could pound ground, literally pound the ground on the Bucks, run the damn ball. 
pressure Brady, who's without his two of his top three Pro Bowl receivers, of course. Like, we know Brady without all these weapons isn't the same guy. He struggled. Yeah, sure, he beat on the Jets and he beat on the Panthers, but what's he going to do against an Eagles team that is going to be well-rested and well-prepared for this game? It's going to be a really interesting game. It might be the most interesting game that we see the entire weekend. I really do mean that. It's it's I just it's just the Bucks who are supposed to just steamroll the Eagles, but I don't think people understand how good the Eagles really are. I mean, the Eagles could come out and dominate this game or they could come out and get blown out. I th I don't know, man. It's, it, or they could I don't know if this is going to be a close game because if it is, then that, I mean, I, that would be interesting, but again, it's like Tom Brady against Jalen Hurts. I mean, what's the, Jalen Hurts is 23, Tom Brady's 44. That's a 21-year-old A gap. That's the largest A gap in the history of the NFL playoffs. So as much as I like Jalen Hurts, I mean, when you're going back and forth with Tom Brady, I'm not liking my odds there. But if the Eagles can really manage the clock and capitalize on opportunities and mistakes from the Bucks, because there's not going to be many, it's still Tom Brady, they're going to have a good chance to win this game. And the Bucks, they are banged up. Brady's presence alone can offset quite a lot. And he'll have tight end Rob Gorkowski, who he was missing from the last time these two teams met in week six. He's been a steady target for Brady. I think he caught like, what was it, seven or eight balls last week. But to say the Bucks have depth concerns would be an understatement. I mean, the Eagles, they have just two starters listed as questionable entering Sunday's rematch, guys. The Bucks have already ruled out Ronald Jones. They've ruled out wide receiver Kyro Grayson, which is a big deal because they're already, with, like I said, without Antonio Brown and Chris Gawin, and now also you have both starting cornerbacks, Carlton Davis with a back injury, and Sean Murphy Bunting with a hamstring are also questionable, and Ronald, uh, excuse me, Leonard Fournette, his, he has a hamstring, he he hasn't been officially activated, so that's the thing, there was a Bucks fan who was kind of talking some trash to me, saying, oh yeah, yeah, you're like, Fournette's gonna be back, and although he might be back, he has not been activated yet, he's dealing with a hamstring, so is he even playing, like if you're without Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, and now... Tyrell Grayson, how are you going to move the ball down the field? Seriously, that's a serious question. The Eagles have not been good against these top offenses in the league, but th this isn't a top offense in the league without those guys healthy. And even defensively, I mean, two starting corners are, are banged up. We don't even know if they're playing. And even if they do play, they're not 100%. If I'm a Bucks fan, obviously, you know, I, I might be a little bit concerned, but they should be greatly concerned here. And even if Fournette does suit up, like once again, he's is he gonna get a is he gonna be thrown into a full workload after being out a month? I, I'm just not buying it, man. I mean, Brady's gonna be looking at Mike Evans, but again, once again, just to completely counter that, Darius Slay is a shadow corner. He should be able to lock up Mike Evans. And then you have Tyler Johnson, Scotty Miller, and Brashad Perryman. They're decent receivers there, but nothing that the Eagles should be concerned about. And another thing to just completely counter Tom Brady is the NFC East, it has his number. I'm not saying that this is like the type of Saint situation here, but NFC East teams, they have fared far better than expected in some big spots against Brady. You have the Eagles who upset Brady and Belichick in the Super Bowl in 2017. The Giants obviously did that in those two Super Bowls. And then Washington <laughs> gets last season, well, 2020, wild card. They almost knocked him out. So Brady is 0-5 against the spread against NFC East opponents in the playoffs and 2-3 and outright considering his playoff track record. History is on the side of the underdog. And I know you're probably like, that doesn't mean anything. And you're right, it really doesn't. But also, I, it's a stat that I kind of like to have with me. I mean, Brady doesn't really play well against the NFC East teams when it matters most. And then since 2001, the Eagles are in astounding 10-1 and against the spread and 6-5 and outright as playoff underdogs per ESPN, of course. The Bucks are favored by eight and a half. It was seven and a half. I guess it's eight and a half now. I mean, they're they're one and ten against the spread. Does any of this actually benefit the 2021 Eagles against the Bucks? No, it really it really doesn't. But also, it's just something that you like to have in your back pocket. It's your boy Swaggy signing out. Good luck tomorrow, Eagles fans. I will be with you guys sometime after the game to break it down whether they win or lose. Later.